My guest today is a Tony and Olivier award-winning actress who is currently back on the board strapping on a corset to play Madame de Mertoy opposite Liev Schreiber in Les Liaisons Dangerous. Thank you for being here, Janet well McTeer. Well done, well done. Now, I know, three words of, I know three French words, and those are them. <laughs> Les liaisons dangereuses. dangereuses. <laughs> well, actually, and uh, miserable. Oh, yeah, well, that works too. <laughs> that's, my, that's my complete <laughs> that's French. That's it. Mm. How about you? Croissant. Uh, a cro croissant. Yeah, okay, yeah. yes, you're yeah. correct. Are you uh, naturally a French? No, I, I could get by. Okay. I can get by. I can vaguely sound like I know what I'm talking about when I'm, I do that a lot. It's funny. I actually was looking at a website because I wanted to make sure I was saying all the words right. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a there's an audio track for people doing the play. I guess where it pronounces every French word in the play. Oh really? It's like a cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, it's like one one a woman saying sheet? all the words in oh, Lele is on anyway. Nice. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. I'm so Glad happy you're on Broadway. Here. You're dazzling in this show. Thank I, it's you. one of my favorite plays. Are you having a good time? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. What's not to love? It's just she's. It's such a great play. And she's such a great part, and it's, we have a great cast, and our director's fantastic. It looks amazing. Corsets are, a, you know, strapping on a corset. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you do that Ooh. often. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, a little, it's a little, you know, you have to be careful what you eat at five o'clock in the afternoon right. so that I'm not right. throwing up down Liev's back. But So are know. all your dream roles like things in sweatpants? Like someday yeah, just exactly. you can be on, be on Broadway uh, uh, yeah. just in the most casual yeah, outfit exactly. ever. Exactly, and no makeup. <laughs> yeah. No makeup. The real Janet McTeer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, the entrance. Your entrance in this show is, is stunning. I know, I've never seen it. Oh my God. So annoying. The show starts with such a bang. Yeah. And you look gorgeous. Thank what you. is the, the prep time like to get to get yourself it's, into it's a long. It's a long prep. It's, yeah. a, it's a, about two and a quarter hours. Oh wow! I, yeah, so I get there, and you really want to know the real details, the yeah, real boring I, I, details I, I, of it. Details. Okay, I always do a steam okay. to get the whole voice and everything, and yeah. what with it being winter and all the flu bugs uh -huh. flowing around, right. and desperate not to get sick. So well, I was going to ask. There's a lot of making out in this show too. I know. Oh, you've no idea. We all have endless amounts of sort of fire water with you know okay. apple cider vinegar and garlic, and we're, we're all knocking <laughs> okay, that back. Okay, constantly. Okay, it's just uh, yeah. So I steam, and then we all do a vocal warm up on stage, uh -huh. and then go to wigs and get the whole wig on and then the corset goes on relatively early in order to you have to kind of get used to not being able to use your ribs it's quite hard to take a big deep breath so I, I put that on relatively early to, and then depending on what day of the week on, week it is I put on a lot of under eye makeup at the end of the week because I'm actually <laughs> tired so uh, yeah so it's quite it's quite long and then we always dance me and the other ladies, we always have a dance to usually oh, wow. something deeply inappropriate. So you must feel just like girlier than ever doing this role. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's kind exploring of exploring your feminine side. I'm exploring my feminine side, <laughs> and it's fun playing with all of those kind of movements and the way they walk. They always had to walk inside their dresses so you didn't see their legs moving, and uh, think working on things like that, and then so that you can then throw that away when you get cross or upset or. Right. You know, so yeah. you can play with the studied side of it and the naturalistic side of it, and that's I, I enjoy that. Yeah. This is an interesting project for you because you did it in in the Dahmer Warehouse mm -hmm. in London with Dominic West, mm -hmm. and you're the you came over to do it, and it's an entire new company. Mm -hmm. You're the holdover from that company. What is that like? Is that um, a scary experience? Because you obviously want to recreate the magic of what worked there, and it's mm. a whole new group of people. Were there any uh, concerns about that, or was it just, is that exciting to sort uh, of... No, it was very exciting. I decided to just not re-look at it at all. I firmly believe, and as did Josie, our director, wonderful yeah. director, that you know people are at their best when they're at their most creative, when, they're, when you're asking them to feel like they are inventing. So I didn't want to uh, feel like anybody in the cast had to do what they that we had done in London. Mm, right. So apart from certain things like we knew how the scene changes, you know, that we do them with the, the candles and the music and it's new music, it's different setting because obviously okay. we were in a little we we're in a little studio three sided and here we're right, across right, our stage. Yeah. So but the idea behind those are the same. Right. If you see what I mean. And certain things with the candles are the same. But other than that, all the movements and all the actual interreactions, that's all new. So as far as I was concerned, I felt I wanted to, I knew the themes that I still had of yep. control and humiliation, jealousy, love, or sex, all of intrigue, all of those things, right. damage, abuse, misuse of young women, all those sort yeah. of things. I felt they were the same on the inside, but how they come out on the outside, I think is, 
different. You've done well with the, the leading men on this project. I mean, I we all love Dominic West on The Affair, mm -hmm. the hot men of Showtime, <laughs> and, Lee, and, and Liev on uh, Ray, Ray Donovan. Poor me. <laughs> it's yeah, just I know. awful. Nobody's Someone has to do you. it, right? <laughs> had you seen Liev on stage before? Liev yes, Schreiber? I had. I saw he was amazing in View from the Bridge. Yes, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Did you know him, though? No, no. You, you met at the photo shoot. And yeah. we've all seen video of this photo shoot yeah. now where he's basically <laughs> ravishing you. Yeah. And yeah. basically all like, in a day's work. I'm a big fan. And Hi. Let's do this. Moving in. Yeah, and that, that's just, that's showbiz. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. did you guys immediately sort of feel a great connection? Yes, yes, because I think we're b both, we, like, we had such a laugh at that film that the, the the yeah. photo shoot and it was very funny and that that sort of sense of humor and I can't quite describe it and a certain we're both very visceral and, yep. and very sort of an animalistic and we're the same size more or less I mean he's a little bit taller than me but that kind of sort of you know yeah, that yeah. we both have uh -huh. um, like a muscularity to your work yes yeah, yes both, exactly yeah. and so that felt fun and exciting and um, yeah so it was, it's just been really easy yeah. From this, the word go, really. This is a great story. I fell in love with this uh, when I saw Dangerous Liaisons, the American, the easier the easier title, yeah. the, <laughs> starring your, your friend, Glenn Close, mm -hmm. um, in your in the same role. And, and I know that you saw it originally with Lindsay Duncan, correct? Mm -hmm. So you, what was your first experience seeing it? When I first saw it, I was, uh, I think I was still at college, and I think I saw it about three times. I remember standing at the top of the back on a student, you know, you know yeah. and I thought it was amazing. I thought Lindsay was completely fantastic. And it's one of those things that you, I mean, that's a long time ago now, but I, I remember it clearly, and yet I realize I don't really remember it all at the same right, time. Right. I remembered her voice, I remembered her poise, uh, but I couldn't tell you scene for scene mm -hmm. what she did, but I remember just thinking she was incredible. So That's the magic of theater. You remember, you have these interesting memories of people's performances yeah. and shows. And but yet you can't necessarily put your, f yeah. you can say I remember this or this or this moment. But yeah. And then of course I saw Glenn being brilliant in the film. And uh, so yeah, I had two, two um, epic ladies to kind of shake off in order to try and, and I haven't seen anyone else do it. I know it's been done since then, but right. I have, those are the only two yeah. Um, productions I'd seen. Did you talk to Glenn at all when you took Yes, it was so weird. Glenn had just turned up in London. I think she was doing, um, she was rehearsing, she was doing press for Sunset Boulevard yeah. that she was doing there. And uh, so I met her on, after the first day and uh, I was going to sneak her into the rehearsal and freak everybody out. But <laughs> I was there <laughs> <everybody> go, <gasps> But uh, I can't remember, she was stuck up in, a, in, a, in her photo shoot. But then I met afterwards and we were talking about it and um, She's coming back into town in a bit, I think, so she's going yeah. to come and see it. So. Yeah, I know. Have you ever seen, did you see her do Sunset Boulevard? No, because I was, Yeah. when, when, the timing didn't when work. she was actually doing it, I wasn't there. Right. We had just left. Right. Did you see her do it originally? No. You have to see it. It's I know, crazy. but I I'm hoping it's because she's going to bring it to Broadway. What, what about Cruel Intentions? Did you ever see that? No, I've never so, seen that. It's Although so my nickname, so one of the young actresses in London used to call me Madame de Bouffy. Because <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't like the girl who played Buffy yeah, yeah. Buffy yeah. yeah, but the characters are just so it's all about sex and conniving and I mean it's such a sexy story. Have you in your life ever had to manipulate to work a relationship out or like you ever had to uh, uh, plot plot uh, to get the right guy or? Um, I've worked with two people who were manipulative. One was a girl and one was a man. Both times I found it incredibly hard. Wow! And because. I think until you've really experienced that kind of manipulation, I think you don't recognize it. Mm. Because of course the great manip manipulators are all incredibly charming. That's how yeah. they get away with it. Yeah. And once you've, once you've learned that lesson, I think it would be quite hard to manipulate me now. Somebody right. would have to be very good. But I have to, because I can see it a mile off now, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd walk the other way. Because it's right. such an unpleasant characteristic. But it was very useful, clearly, because yeah, now did, I, you, did know, you, like, you think about these, these are actors you worked with. One like, was one was an actor, and the other was just a person who I knew. Wow! And uh, so you think back on those things. When I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I'm thinking, how did that person get away with everything? You know, it was right. just a, a business person. But right. how did they do that? How did they get away with that? How right. does everyone think they're great when they're just horrible? Right. And it's all about them. And make you a victim. Yes, and yeah. that, that your their needs are paramount. Nobody right. else's needs count. And yet somehow they make you believe that that's true. Right, right. 
in the end, of course, it's always to their own detriment. Yeah. Because well, in the end, people almost always find out. I've read this. I've read uh, your backstory, and you you're, you grew up in England, and acting was not something you sort of. No. I mean, you, your first interaction with actors was was like serving them coffee, correct? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So where was theater, that? In my local theatre in the north of England, in York. Right. And uh, I uh, we used to go there. Me and my best friend Jane would go there because it was our bus stop stopped outside there, and, mm-hmm. and the boys' school used to go in there, so you could go and flirt with the boys from the next right. door school. So it's about meeting boys. Yeah, basically. totally. Nothing to do with theatre. It was all right. about the boys. <laughs> and uh, and then and then I just loved the place, and then I met the actors, and then I got a job selling coffee, and I just they would let me go in and see all the plays, and and I realised it was just that was my thing. Did you not really have uh, like a direction or interest? Before you discovered acting, I mean, it seems like it just sort of like yeah, w- yeah, no, it was al- always books and literature, and okay. that's what I really thought I would do. I thought I would go to university and study literature and English literature and or psychology, those two things, and th- th- those are still my other great right. loves, right? Really, and do you think that great actors? Do you think it's something that? Y- you're born with? Is there something in there, or is it just all about training? Or oh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's, I think, you know, I think there's only three things an actor really needs. You need talent, you need confidence, and you need hard work. And if you have all of those three in a nice thing, I always say it's like, uh, like I'm, I'm very, I'm big on training. I mean, mm. people who say a lot of actors don't train. I think that's so wrong. That's like saying, that's like saying it's uh, you have a talent, great, yeah. but that you don't need to hone it, you don't need to right. l- learn how to use it, you don't need to be able to look at it in different ways. That's like saying it's not a craft, right. and it is, right. or it should be, to stand right. on a stage and do what you do every night so that everyone can hear you and everyone can see you so that you're, you're telling the story in the... But I think that takes training. I, I always think it's like a... Training is like um, being a little bird, you know, where you see the all like a... Like a duck or something. I don't know. You, you know, you have to. You have, your little legs uh-huh. have to go like that, and then you fly. Uh-huh. And the audience should only ever see the flight. Uh-huh. Like all of that work right. it has to be done right. underneath, so that you can sustain it, so that you're fresh, so that you're consistent, so that you can do it when you're on film. Same that you're. It's a lens of a camera that opens wider for a, a stage than mm-hmm. film. But the the starting point is exactly the same, or mm. it should be. Right. So it, for me. Training is huge. I think that's. I think it's. I get kind of. I get quite cross with people who think that actors mm. don't need to train. Yeah. I think it's, it annoys me. What excites you? Like, what what kind of projects? What do you think gets your interest up on a, in a, a TV project or a movie or, or a show? It's always the writing. The writing has mm. to be good. Yeah. Uh, if the writing isn't good, you've got nothing. Mm-hmm. And of course, as well, it's an age-related craft. Right. So, you know. Played all those wonderful young roles when I was young. Right. I've got nothing to explore in those. Right. But you know, as you, ch- I've yet to play all those older roles that mm-hmm. I could still play coming up, and I hope I'll still be fit and healthy enough to do them. So yeah. How do you like being in New York? I know I love that you live in Maine. Yeah. So. I, I love Maine is such a beautiful, yeah. beautiful place. You've lived there for how long now? Like nine years. Okay, with your husband yeah. and his son, yeah. and your son. It's beautiful there. And what, what, what's it like being in New York? And do you miss Maine? And I want to talk about that a little bit. So well, we go backwards and forwards every okay. o- almost every week. Okay. So, um, so is he here, here with you too? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, my husband goes backwards and forwards every week. And, okay. and uh, we do that. We're there every weekend, right. in essence. Okay. And like now when I'm working, I'm going up on Sunday night. So okay. I'm right there on Monday. So you use your to break to go to Maine? I do, yeah. But, you know... It, it's it's the hardest thing about our life in Maine, as it were, is is that it just means a lot of travel. Yeah, it's a huge amount of travel, but it's great. That's where my husband comes from, and that's where his son lives all the time. And so you know, all of that is just perfect. Yeah, and we live by the ocean, and we I have know, a big and dog. You fish. And I'm a good fisherman. You're a good fisher. Oh, I yeah. love that. Forty-two inch striped bass I caught. Not this year. Nothing. Last year. It's great. <laughs> But I, I like it. I like that most people don't know what I do for a living. I'm, yeah. You know, I like that. So you know your neighbors and you know yeah, the, yeah. the people of Maine. Yeah, exactly. But you just sort of get on and live your life. And I love all of that. I love everything about it. Even once I don't have to, mm-hmm. I still can't see myself living in one place. Mm, okay. I can see us moving for a couple of months here and there. Right. And, 
Maine or New York or London. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, because I just think that would be, I like that. I've, I've always enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but when you're in New York. Oh, I love New York. Yes, I do love New York. Yeah. But I would get very claustrophobic if I was here all the time. What was it like when you first came here to do a Doll's House and a big Tony winning smash success and it sort of really launched you yeah. here for, for us, for, for New Yorkers and for Americans? What was it like for you coming here at that time? How were you different then? Were you like nervous about it all? Or oh, is yes, that, I was like, Is I that a leap a big, for? Yes, but I've never been afraid of taking a leap. I'm, uh -huh. I find leaps easier than slides, I think. Yeah, leaps excite me. Any kind of leap excites me. I love it. If it's mm -hmm. something I haven't done before, I find that just so thrilling. Right. Um, and I could, I could, you know, I would like to say that I would be, you know, acting till I'm 95, but chances are, you know, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll decide <laughs> right. to do something else. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was incredibly exciting to come here. It, then I'd never been to New York before, and here I was coming to do a play on Broadway. Yeah. And that was shocking and exciting, and I met all these amazing people, and it was... Uh, I had an amazing time. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Got incredibly tired, I seem to remember, but I did love it because the the sort of the way we'd rehearse the play, it was so full on and so out there yeah. that it was a very tiring play. Mm -hmm. And you know, we started doing it for sort of six weeks and then we went into the West End. Then we didn't and then right. we exited. And then yeah. we came here for few months and then it got extended and then it Kept got extended growing, yeah. and in the end I just I just I couldn't do it anymore I was too tired. Yeah. What are you not good at? You're su you're such a you're such a great actress. I, I every time I see you on stage I'm just sort of dazzled by your talent oh, or on screen. You. And it makes me it's almost like people could take you for granted like well Janet McTears she's she's, she's going to be brilliant and <laughs> do you ever do you ever sort of um what like what makes you feel insecure, or what what do you feel like you're not good at, or that I, I don't know? Is that a, a weird think, question? Um, no, no, not at all. I think, um, like I said earlier on, you know, confidence is a huge yeah. part of what we do. It takes a huge amount of confidence to go out and do something different yeah. or create something, stand there and expect expect every, hope for, that everybody will like you. Um, I think. I always get nervous before shows, I really do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm better at it than I used to be. Right. Um, there's always a period in previews, a couple of shows in previews where you can guarantee when you go, oh my God, <laughs> I don't care how healthy I want to be, somebody open a bottle of Grey Goose. And <laughs> I'm, I just want to go away and hide. That's the go-to, uh, Grey Goose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I expect that now. You know, uh -huh. I know that that's going to happen, so you just have to ride that yeah. storm for a right. few days and then you hope that it's going to be okay and that mm -hmm. you're going to get your confidence. And then I, because I, and you, then you just have to be very philosophical about it in a sense of going, if you go and see somebody do something, you want it to be alive, you want it to be real, you want mm -hmm. it to be not necessarily expected, you want it to be all of these things. Right. And in order to do that, you just have to say, well, I'm going to do my best. And, uh, and uh, I will never, there'll always be, however many people think you're brilliant, there'll always be somebody who'll go, nah, I didn't quite get it mm -hmm. really. And you just have to accept that and just do it regardless with a kind of open heart. Mm -hmm. and, and every night you want to play with your co-stars and find things. And, yeah, absolutely. And is that, is that, does that happen? I mean, obviously it doesn't happen every night that you have those sort of alive moments, but... It must be Most exciting nights. that you just sort of can find those moments. And Most nights, and it depends on who you're playing with as yeah. well. Some people like to do that more than others. You know, Liev and I, really, we really throw it about. Mm -hmm. And that's fun because it keeps it alive and bright. And yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think what other plays you guys could do together. I don't know. I'm just about <laughs> There's a few people keep coming up with lists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like lists. What, so what's going to so you're playing through uh, January eighth. Yeah. And then what? What do you? What do you? What's after that? Fishing or like what's what's the next? No, it's well, it's going to be really fishing icy. season. Right? Yeah, no, it's over. I'm sorry. It's it's ice. Oh, don't rub it in. Ice skating? Does that happen up there? Yeah, yeah, like? yeah, we'd be doing... Kind of How rural right. is the area? Is there a Target yeah, nearby? Or <laughs> do you have We mall? love Target, right? At the okay, moment. okay. Just um, sure. Yeah, I'm going to eat a lot. Eat a lot, okay. And uh, we'll walk the, the dog, we'll be the go-to Janet McTeer, like, pig-out meal. Pig-out meal? Oh, roasted chicken and okay. all the works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, yeah, I would do that and uh, just be at home. Yeah. Be at home. And then also when you're doing a play like this, you never do all the other stuff. 
you know, I don't know, the stuff that needs doing, right, like right. accounts, and, right, right. you know, I don't know, getting your che teeth checked and yeah. all of that stuff, it just never yeah. gets done. Life, life, yeah. So I do all of those things. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you're not able to do any of those things right now because I'm thrilled you're on Broadway. <laughs> I know, and I'm uh, loving it, I'm loving it. And everyone needs to go to the Booth Theater, uh, the <laughs> beautifully intimate production. It's so great to see it there with the candlelight. It's a stunning, stunning yeah. production. Lit right? by candlelight. Yeah, I know, it's amazing. it's amazing, so so good. Thank you, Janet, for being here. Thank you. And thank you for being on Broadway. Please keep coming back. Thank you. And everyone, go see Les Liaisons Dangerous at the Booth Theater through January 8th. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.